behind me, we've got uh, the Montrose Currents. I'm here with my good friend Jeff. Today's video is how to nibble an enormous boulder down to a very small boulder. Reason being to get what's inside along the fissures, along the cracks. Yeah, it's an enormous task, but it's a way to um, easily, not easily, but to extract uh, some decent crystals that others don't have the time to, uh, to spend to get at. There we go. There we go. Out of the jungle. Woo. So this is your classic dollar stone. You can see all the little pores. The characteristic of this being that it sucks in water like a sponge. Unlike limestone, which has this tight interlocking crystal structure, this is a little looser. It has magnesium. The Lockport dollar stone being what we're looking for. That what I just showed you doesn't really have a lot in the way of minerals. You want to pick your rock because if you're going to devote time to it, um, you want to devote time to something that is rich in what you're looking for. Where about? Just a little one. what I'm choosing to work on. It's got a lot of calcite and dollar stone crystals in large pockets so I'm just going to keep breaking the rock apart and already good start. Lovely well-formed little calcite crystals and dollar stone. Lovely radiating selenite again. Just kind of wondering if there's any connection between this sort of fossilized sponge and uh, the shape of the selenite. Um, the way it's crystallized, if it's some kind of a replacement or what. As I've mentioned in previous videos, there also seems to be a connection between the fluorite and the sponge, or at least the holes that the sponge makes. Very commonly you'll find the sponge with fluorite crystals on top of it. I don't know if they act as like a wicking material or, or what. So this is typically what you're going to see at the Montrose occurrence um, behind me. Uh, lots of big boulders. Uh, you got Montrose Road off there to my left, the hill to my right. Um, again, a little disappointing. I thought they were actually digging into the hill. No, they're not. Just digging the foundations for a new building at the Lowe's, in front of the Lowe's. So here's an example of a, a boulder that I would say is worth digging into. And the reason I say that, it's got lots of little cavities. You can see, even though these are smashed around quite badly, there's a ton of sizable calcite crystals, so you pretty well know the rest of the boulder will have much of the same. Just got to find your seam that you're going to start exploiting, go inwards, cleave it open, and you're likely to find more, um, more of these calcite crystals. So how do, you, how do you attack a rock of this size? Well, basically, notice the difference in sound? That area has obviously got a, a fracture somehow in the vicinity which means it's not firmly attached. That would be one heck of a job to chisel through. So, sound it out. Sound it out, find your fracture. So I walk around to have a look. Where could it be? Well, you can see I've already gone at the fracture a little bit. It's along here. So I hold the, the, the chisel loosely so that the end of the chisel can find the angle of the fracture. Otherwise, you're fighting against it all the time. Hold it loosely. Tap it till it's in, into the fracture, and then just keep working, and this whole piece will cleave off. So, thing to keep in mind: a fracture usually occurs along a plane of weakness. It could be a bedding plane within the rock, or it could be um, a bedding plane that is further weakened by po pockets, vugs, vugs being filled with crystals. More hollow, the lower the sound, the more muffled the sound, the looser the rock. Sometimes two chisels are the way to go, um, each in a different spot in the crack. Um, experience eventually tells you where to put it. Uh, the whole idea being both of them are exerting their pressure and eventually you hear a hollow pop. Right after that, your rock will come off. And this is indeed a very big rock. Um, I've been at it for about 10 minutes now. Two chisels. Synergy of five or six. Look at it. Everything's coming loose already. Any second now. Listen, here it comes. Here it comes. Ah, almost there. Okay. 
No hollow pop, but it's off. There we go. Look at the size of that bad boy. Where next, you ask? Well, quite obviously here. Nice, simple, and obviously it'll take it along. What you can see is that natural planar weakness right there. It'll probably cleave off that whole piece. Boom. Sadly, here's where I want to be. So it's going to be quite a bit of work to get to there. don't even know if I'll get there today. So I begin with my narrow head chisel. And that is the easiest one to begin the crack with, or the fissure. And then I go to my wider head chisel, which has a greater effect. But it needs this little narrow crack opened up first before I can go to that. So I can see the cracks developing already. I can see a fracture starting there. So it's going to probably take off along here. I can see the crack. And it may take off up there as well. So we'll have that big chunk taken out by actually going down the middle of the chunk. So again, I don't know if you can see it, but all along there, that's your fracture. And it just keeps on going until it hits a new layer. It cannot continue in the new layer, so it's got to find another path. So it's going up this way. So it'll never actually break with an inward sort of angle like that. It's going to have to break and cleave outward. There's the next step. This whole piece is coming off. You can see it's starting down there. I can hear the cracking sound. So you're probably talking nah, two to three hours work on a boulder of this size uh, to reach that um, particular weakness, that fissure where we know the vugs are concentrated along. So, I mean, one option is to just go and smash all the crystals, which some people do, which is just really messed up. Just It wrecks it for other rock hounds. Or you can take your time and exploit the fissures and eventually get there and open up something worthwhile. I, I advise the second option. A what? A what? Oh, we better stick together, man.